Hello YouTube, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com. Before watching this video, I'd like to let you know that I have over 500 similar videos available on my site, CodeReviewVideos.com. If you love Symfony, then you'll feel right at home here. I'll show you how to build both websites and JSON APIs, and then we're going to talk to those JSON APIs using React and Redux. There's courses on Docker and Ansible, as well as loads on deployment and test-driven development and behavior-driven development. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And as ever, thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com. And in this short series, we're going to look at how we can take the GitHub beginner tutorial to Symfony 3 and update that for Symfony 4. So rather than just completely restart from scratch, we're going to cover the migration path from Symfony 3.x up to Symfony 3.4 and then from 3.4 onwards to 4. Now the reason for this is that Symfony 3.4 provides most of the same features as Symfony 4 and so if our project code works with Symfony 3.4 then it's likely to continue working with Symfony 4. Now the changes between Symfony 3 and Symfony 4 are quite big and even though we're tackling perhaps the most simplistic Symfony project on the entire site, this process will still take quite a while and there's quite a lot to it. So as it stands, I have the project pulled down, like I've cloned it from GitHub and I can do a PHP bin console server start now if I visit that link, we should see the site up and running. There's not a great deal to this site, honestly. There's no database connectivity to worry about. There aren't any forms. Pretty much we're just looking at controller actions. The one interesting part as such is that we use the 8 points guzzle bundle for interactivity between our web server, which is our local computer in this instance, and the GitHub API. Now when I originally started this tutorial, if we look at the commit history, we can see it was about two years ago, May 14th. 2016 and I think it was on Symfony 3 as in just 3.0 but we can quickly check that if we browse Composer JSON we should be able to see in here that yep we were using Symfony 3.0 and then to keep things up to date I updated it to Symfony 3.2 on March 16th 2017. So the first step here is to bring it up to Symfony 3.4 and we're going to do that in a sort of naive fashion to begin with. So from the application itself just going to jump into Composer JSON, find the Symphony Symphony requirement, and I'm going to bump that up to Symphony 3.4. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to stop that server for the moment. And I'm just going to run a Composer update and see where that takes us. Now, as a heads up, it's important to bring the other dependencies up to date when you do things like this. And in the next few videos, we'll cover how to figure out what to update in the easiest way possible. Now, one of the unexpected potential gotchas between Symfony 3.2 and Symfony 3.3 is that they extracted out the web server into its own separate bundle. Now, that bundle is not included by default. So what that means is that command where we were running PHP bin console server start will actually no longer work. So just up arrow a couple of times, get back to server start. And you can see no commands defined in the server namespace, which is very strange, honestly, and leads you to a sort of Googling session if you're unsure which I'm assuming you are going to be because this is a sort of beginner friendly tutorial. To fix this, we need to do two different things. We need to do a composer require against symphony slash web dash server dash bundle. And you can find all this information on Packagist. And then I'm going to use dash dash dev. And what that's going to do is it's going to pop the dependency into our require dev section rather than just the require section. And the reason for doing this is because we don't need that web server in a production build. So when we go to deploy, we'd be using Apache or Nginx or something like that. We're not going to be using the built-in web server. So that should be pulled down now. I think I'm overestimating the speed of my internet. We can try it again and it still doesn't work. And that's because as ever with a Symfony dependency, we need to make sure that we've added an entry into our bundles. And in this case, the syntax is a little bit strange. It's very similar in a way to this syntax, but we're not going to enable it for the test environment. We're only going to enable our bundle in the dev environment. So we're going to say if dev is equal to the outcome of this get environment, then only then add the web server to our list of available bundles. Now with that change in place, we should be able to start up our web server, which it looks like we can. We should be able to go back here, give this a refresh and everything should be behaving as it was. With a couple of differences, so obviously now we're on 3.4.1 and also now we've got these 14 deprecations. So if we look in here, we can see our deprecation log and these are all the things that we need to tackle before we can get up to Symphony 4 without any potential issues. 